Hi, this is Matt with Rockstars Magazine, and I had the distinguished pleasure of interviewing Corporate Death from the legendary murder metal band Macabre. Hello. So, thanks for joining us today, and uh, you have a new album out. It's called Grim Scary Tales, which uh, I would like you to elaborate for our readers, if you could, about the album. Okay. Um, we didn't do an album for many years now. It's like 1993 was our last album. Took a little break from writing and reading about the serial killers. Um, just for my own sanity, basically, because I was constantly reading about these guys. And then I can come back fresh with new ideas and um, have a fresh perspective on it. So I sat down and wrote uh, lyrics for this album for a few years and music for it. And um, we went and recorded it. But um, this is part one. There will be a part two coming out, which I'm hope hoping to get out next year. And uh, this album is a history of murder, and it starts from the earliest recorded killers. Um, we start in uh, Roman times, uh, ancient Rome, uh, Nero Caesar uh, time, and um, we go to World War I on this album. And the part two will take off from World War I to modern times. And I'm going to sing about, you know, as many different guys in the new album as I can. I was only able to do 14 songs in this album with time limitations, but next album I'm going to really try to go crazy with it. And on this album I tried to get more versatile with the music and the vocals. Um, I have noticed that I love, uh, like, uh, Nero's Inferno is a, uh, a happy sort of... I tried to sound Italian, Italian on it, yeah, yeah. Which you are, so that's, that's yeah. cool. And, um... Mostly because I get bored doing the same vocal style all the time, and I like doing variety. It's more interesting for me, and I think people seem to like it too. That you know, it doesn't always sound the same. We're always going different directions with it, and I think um, singing about the serial killers, we can go pretty much any direction we want with the music. Um, except I probably wouldn't go in the direction of rap or anything like that. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> And uh, I know that you've uh, had dealings with John Wayne Gacy before. I mean, uh, could you go into further detail on that? Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine from Tampa, Florida, He's um, he deals in serial killer artwork now. But back then, he was just getting into it. And um, he was getting paintings from Gacy. And um, I'm like, wow, I'd like to get a couple of those. So he's like, just write them. So I started writing Gacy at Medard Prison and Death Row, and um, he was able to sell these things. You know, you send this guy a check, and, you know, a month later, I commissioned paintings from him. These are one of the kinds I was getting, too. And um, commission a painting, and uh, get it like a month later. And then my friend from Tampa actually went and uh, met Casey and got photos with him in Death Row, and I'm like, wow, I'd like to do that, too. So, um... He says, well, give him your phone number next time you write him. So I did, and Gacy started calling me once a week. It's like, hey, this is Gacy. Collect call from a nerd prison, you know, and I'm like, I ask him, you know, can I meet you? And he says, yeah, that's no problem. So being it's like five hours away, I figured it's not too bad. So I went there with my drummer the first time and um, sat in a room five hours with Gacy. Um, that must have been lovely. It was quite an experience. And um, who did you go to see Gacy with next? Um, the next time was with my mom. She yeah, said, that sounds mother. interesting. And <laughs> my mom brought a friend with her, another lady, and um, we went there. We got there kind of late the one day, so we got a hotel that night and came back the next day and saw him again. So I actually went there three times, and um, Gacy was calling me up like, next couple of days saying, hey, I like your mom. She's hot. And I'm like, that's, shut up, Gacy. You know? warm the heart <laughs> for your mother, I'm sure. Um, what other sort of interactions have you had with well-known serial killers? Um, not really too much. Just It's mostly research that I do. But being that Gacy was so close and he was so notorious in the area, I figured, you know, this is my one-time chance to actually get to meet one of these guys. And, you know, I just really don't have time to trying to meet these guys and stuff. That's um, kind of a good thing. And I, I really don't have the desire to do it either, but... Um, and you were at the Dahmer trial? Yeah, I, I went to the Dahmer trial with my mom again. <laughs> and um, <laughs> the day I went to a psychologist testimony of um, all these different events and things in Dahmer's life, you know, sick stuff that you didn't see in the books and stuff. And we have a Dahmer album that we did in 2000. It's a, a musical about Jeffrey Dahmer. And um, it goes chronological through his life, from his childhood to when he gets killed in jail. 
and I got a lot of stuff from the trial that I couldn't, you know, I couldn't find in books. So it was it was definitely uh, worth the while going there. Very cool. And you know, I I your macabre is growing in popularity. Um, I, the response has been great in Europe, from what I gather. Um, you guys are just more prominent on things like, uh, say, like uh, Blabbermouth and uh, mm -hmm. Facebook. I mean, what do you think that uh, is going to be happening next with Macabre? What, what do you plan on doing uh, in the coming summer and uh, fall and winter? Well, you know, I think one of the reasons that our popularity grows is we kind of uh, still keep all our old fans, you know, they never kind of give up on us, even if we don't come out with an album for five, six years or something. And uh, then we're always getting new fans from touring and stuff. So we're going to be doing a lot of touring um, coming up. We just did six weeks, November and December, with Napalm Death and Inhalation. And then we just got finished with a April and May tour of Europe. And now I'm going to Canada again, June 1st. And um, then we're going to be doing a U.S. tour with um, with Exhumed and Cephalic Carnage. And then we're going to do some Canada shows with them, like Vancouver and British Columbia and stuff. And then we have Australia after that. And then we're hoping to go back to Europe in the wintertime for maybe Christmas festivals. So we have a pretty busy tour schedule right now. But I'd like to get a little time in there to try to finish this part two to the uh, Grim Scary Tales. Buy it. <laughs> and... Uh, Put it out next year try to record maybe by the end of this year or something or early next year very cool well lance thanks for taking the time to well, thank you. talk with us thank and you. Uh, this is matt with rock scars magazine and you guys have a good one thank you